Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is a brand new feature inside of Power Virtual Agents that allows you to go ahead and call an HTTP endpoint directly within your topic. Let's go. Alright, so PVA does have built-in integration with Power Automate which unlocks many op automation opportunities. It does provide you the lowest barrier of entry for automation use cases and so as a result it makes sense to start with this approach first to see if it works for you. Um, it is something where you have entitlement baked into your license and so you should try Power Automate first to see if it meets your needs. However, there are some situations where you do need some lower latency. Now, historically, people that have run into this issue have typically moved that particular uh, piece of functionality or, or requirement over to a bot framework skill. And that could be either like the SDK or it could be the composer. And this naturally just allowed you to, you know, be able to write some code perhaps or just execute a call with lower latency and as a result reducing the amount of time it takes to go ahead and um, you know provide a response back to the end user. And so there is a new action that is available inside of Power Virtual Agents from within a topic that allows you to go ahead and drag an HTTP node action onto your canvas and that subsequently allows you to go ahead and call a REST endpoint. Now, what's kind of interesting, at least, you know, expert, certainly from my perspective, is that with being able to call a generic HTTP endpoint, this now unlocks the opportunity for you to go ahead and call Azure Logic App Standard from PVA directly. Now, what is particularly of interest in this case is that Logic App Standard has a workflow type that is stateless. And naturally, stateless will go ahead and like operate in a lower latency environment and as a result give you faster responses. And this is one of those opportunities where, especially when you're doing a read, um, it's one of those things where you don't need as much durability as a cloud flow or even logic app consumption or even logic app standard stateful where you've got a checkpoint after every single action. The idea meaning you're making a read, if the call fails, just make the call again. But the flip side is if you can reduce a second or two or even more back to the user who's waiting on the response, that can actually provide some benefits for you. Um, another thing that is possible with Logic App Standard is that ability to go ahead and use VNet connectivity in order to contact on-premises systems. Now, historically, you'd have to use the power or the on-premise data gateway, which is something that just introduced some additional network hops and subsequently some latency. And then last but not least, and I'm not gonna get into it in this video, perhaps another video, but it's something you should look at as well. And that would be Azure API management. Now that you can go ahead and call an HTTP endpoint directly, why not consider putting APIM um, in front of other systems? Especially if you're doing reads, you can subsequently take advantage of caching inside of Azure API management and actually make some very snappy calls back. And as a result, um, improve the user experience for your customers. So the purpose of this particular video is I'm going to show you how you can go ahead and wire up a stateless workflow inside of Logic App Standard and then go ahead and call it from this new HTTP action. All right, so what I have here is I have an existing topic and the topic, uh, you know, this is something I built before that included a call to Power Automate and so I felt like well kind of the the best way to explore this is to just basically do like for like so I took a copy of this particular topic and then I updated it but let's show you what sort of the base functionality is I've got um, basically a ticket management system for customers reporting a power outage and there's a, a topic that allows you to look up your specific topic topic so that allows you to look up a specific ticket. And so what you do is you go ahead and provide a ticket number, and then we go ahead and call this Cloudflow. We check the status. We see if the status is complete. Then we go ahead and indicate that your power is, is back on. Otherwise, we give you the estimated time of restoration. So the, the Cloudflow itself isn't overly complex. Uh, what we're going to do is we've got the PVA 
trigger and and this is definitely part of the value of this like lower bear adventure that i talked about like this experience is quite nice and quite easy to sort of wire up so like that does work quite well so here we're just going to go ahead and do a lookup based upon a specific ticket number and then return a couple fields uh, back to pva so nothing overly complex but uh, just like representative of, of what you would see in this scenario so now what I, I did is uh, I've disabled that topic and then I created a copy of it. And so here you can see lookup ticket uh, and lookup ticket. This one is disabled. This one is a is a lot is the one that's going to call logic app and, and uses the new HTTP action. So we're going to do the same thing. Like I said, it's it's a copy and we go ahead and basically get the ticket number. And this is where we introduce the new capability. So this is HTTP request. Now, where do I find that? Click on the plus sign, go down to advanced, then go ahead and click on send HTTP request. So I'm gonna just delete this one since I've got one configured already. And now I need to go ahead and configure it. So I'm gonna go ahead and basically provide the Logic Apps URL, including the signature. I'm then going to choose the method. Now in this case it is a post and I'm going to send a message body to Logic Apps. So here I do need to do a little bit more wiring up uh, with PBA and Power Automate because they have that first class integration. It, uh, it is a little bit easier from, from that perspective. But here I'll go ahead and click on headers and body and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the type of body that I'm going to send. So if I'm not sending any content, I would select no content. If I'm going to select JSON content, I can go ahead and do that. And then if I wanted to send raw, um, basically I could go ahead and do that. Like you might use raw if you were doing like form URL encoded type stuff, but uh, but here I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna do that. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. And this is where the docs help me out a little bit actually. So. Uh, what I want to do is I want to send a JSON message in. In this case, it's a quite simple JSON message. It's just one basically input. And so what I want to do is I can go ahead and select a JSON and then be able to, you know, select formula from that. So I want JSON content and then formula. This allows me to go ahead and paste in like the structure of my message body. And so if I had a larger message, that would be fine. Just copy and paste your JSON. And then what you can do is basically substitutions. Like here, I'm passing, and this is power effects, but I'm gonna go ahead and pass in my ticket number, which we went ahead and basically retrieved up here. So I can reference these variables downstream here in this particular action. And so I'm gonna pass in this uh, topic dot uh, ticket number, bit of a tongue twister. Here, there's some additional things I can I can deal with if I want to set timeouts. If it's a longer running thing, that's certainly not the goal here. But uh, that's basically the timeout. And then if there was things I need to do from response headers perspective, I could go ahead and do that. And then also control a little bit about error handling if I want to raise an error or continue on error. Now that's the request side of things. Now when it comes to response, um, I have some options here around what I want to do with response and. Probably the easiest way to, to go about this is to use from sample data. And that's exactly what I did. I went into like the PVA response and I said, or sorry, the Power Automate response that I previously used. And I basically took that JSON, pasted it in, and then it basically said like, okay, this is gonna be a record. And then I can go ahead and save that as a variable. Now, when I wanna use that variable downstream, it actually works quite well. Um, if I go into another, say, uh, message box here, I can click on variable, and then I'm going to see the basically the response body. But it's also smart enough because it's a it's basically I gave it a sample to give me the actual elements or the attributes that exist as part of that JSON message as well. And so all I did is I went and updated these because it's going to be a little bit different than than the Power Automate ones just because of the way it's like that built-in integration. But it does work quite seamlessly from, from that perspective. Otherwise, the rest of my uh, topic remain the same. I just had to update a few of those different properties. Now, let's just flip over to the Logic App and, and let me show you what I did there. Now, from a, a Logic App perspective, um, as I remember, as I mentioned before, we're going to use stateless, right? Now, Logic App's stateless kind of has two modes where you've got debug mode on and debug mode off. 
Now, for the purpose of this demo, I've got debug mode set to on because otherwise you wouldn't see anything. Uh, really, part of the benefit of stateless workflows is that there isn't that checkpointing that takes place that you see in cloud flows in consumption logic apps or stateful standard logic apps. And that's where part of the speed comes from. You, you, it's a trade-off. It's speed for durability because there's fewer checkpoints along the way. So you can temporarily enable this for, for, for debugging purposes. It's not something we recommend you having enabled in production full time um, because you're naturally going to slow things down and it kind of defeats the purpose of, of using stateless. Like if you need this run history all the time, you need stateful processing, then use stateful. Uh, but here we've got this particular um, workflow and let's hit the design surface and it's going to look pretty much identical to what you saw before. The difference is we've got a generic HTTP request and we've got the response instead of the PVA trigger in action, which under the hood is, is using HTTP. So it is conceptually quite similar. Uh, I did go ahead and use a sample payload to have a, a typed schema. That type schema then allows me to go ahead and use dynamic content uh, in this case, a filter query. So I'm going to go ahead and call Dataverse in the same manner that I did in, in Power Automate. And then I'm going to go ahead and respond to attributes. And uh, so very similar uh, from that perspective. So let's flip back over to PVA and we can go ahead and give this a call. I'll just reset the conversation here. Uh, we'll go ahead. Yeah, we didn't, don't want to make any changes. Let's go ahead and just provide a trigger phrase of ticket lookup. And then here we're going to provide our case number. And here we can see that the status of our ticket is complete and our power is back on. Now, because I had debug mode enabled, uh, we are going to see the record over here and we can see our, our run history because I've got debug mode enabled and we can see the, the data that's, that's being returned back and forth. So let's go and disable debug mode, which is generally, you know, the, the default behavior of stateless. And now we can go ahead and call this. And when we call it, we're not going to see any sort of records in our run history because that's kind of the point is that we're not actually doing all of that checkpointing. Okay, so we'll go ahead and run this again. Ticket lookup. We'll provide our case. And there we go, there's our update. So this uh, basically concludes the video, but hopefully that gives you some ideas and uh, demonstrates how you can use the new HTTP request capability found in Power Virtual Agents to go ahead and call various endpoints. Thanks for checking out this video. Uh, I still post somewhat frequently on Twitter. Go ahead and find me at Weirzy over there. Like, subscribe, comments, welcome uh, on the YouTube channel. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon. Take care.